Hi everybody and welcome. My name's Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Today's video is a musical Christmas gift idea video. So it's basically aimed at somebody who wants to buy somebody else in their family um, a musical gift as a present for uh, Christmas, hence Christmas is coming up, or birthday or whatever it is. So maybe you've got um, a, a mother or a father, boyfriend, sister, brother, um, best friend, whoever it is. And let's just say that perhaps they've just picked up the violin or, uh, you know, just a couple of months ago or the piano, that kind of thing. And they're having a look at my YouTube videos and other YouTube videos and things like that. Um, and you really wanted to get something for them for Christmas, something musical, but you have absolutely no idea what to buy them. Well, this video is going to be perfect for you. So what I've done is um, I've got a whole bunch of goodies down here that I'm going to show you. I'm going to separate it into violin gifts and piano gifts. Um, all the links to everything will be underneath for UK people um, and USA people as well. Um, so you know exactly where to buy them and what, what I'm showing you and everything. So this is this kind of video is taking the hard work out for you. So if you want to know what to, to get them, or if you have no idea what, what to get this, this person for Christmas, and you don't want to get them something rubbish, uh, or you want to get them something to do with violin and piano, but you don't want it to be rubbish and a waste of money, and you, you know, will they like it, won't they like it? Well, there are loads of accessories and gifts that you can buy the musician, but I've narrowed it down to the very best things that either I personally have in my collection, or I think a beginner would really, really want to have, but perhaps they couldn't afford to have it, or they didn't know, or you know that kind of thing. So, if you want to know what gifts um, to get your loved one for Christmas, then please keep watching. I'm going to start with violin. Um, these are in no particular order, so I'll just grab as soon as they come to hand. So I think the first thing I think a violinist would absolutely love to have, especially if they've got a student or a beginner violin, is a set of strings um, and a nice set of strings. Obviously the violin that they have comes with a set of strings on them, but if they've got a student quality violin they probably won't be the best strings in the world, so they will benefit from having another set of strings. You can choose from either dominant strings, um, all the links to everything will be underneath, or you can choose Parastro Tonicas. Um, I've done a separate string video review if you want to show a little bit more detail about the strings. The Parastros, I believe, are a little bit cheaper, or well, they are in the UK anyway, than the dominant strings. Um, personally, I would probably go for the dominants if your budget isn't quite reaching to that. These are about £37 a set, by the way, which is... Um, maybe coming on for $50, something like that. Sorry folks, depends on the exchange rate. And these are £26, so these are 30 odd dollars for the Parastro Tonicas. My personal choice would probably be the Dominance. Um, the Parastro Tonicas are nice, but they're quite bright, so if you've got quite a, a, a sort of a, a bright, cheap, studenty violin at the moment, these are going to make them even brighter. So they might not be the best choice, but they are a very good quality set of strings, so they will enhance the, the beginner violin, but these would be my personal preference. The next thing you can get them is a music stand. So um, a music stand is an absolute essential with a violin. I've, I've heard some stories of of sort of my students in the past when they've just started out that they've actually got the music on the floor and they're sitting down you can't do any of that it's you know you don't want to be propping up the music in kind of I don't know makeshift ways like putting it on your sofa or whatever it is so get them a music stand this one is a chrome one this one for example comes in various different colors and it comes with a bag as well so it's great if you want to travel you don't have to keep kind of you know, putting it in, you know, wherever it is. They're, they're quite cumbersome to carry, but uh, the links to this will be underneath as well. So any old music stand will do, folks. Um, but yeah, a music stand would be absolutely perfect for a violinist. The next thing you can get the violinist is a music bag. So this is one of the sort of cheaper music bags that you get. These are literally about five pounds, which has got to be about eight, nine dollars. Um, these are okay, these are this one, these come in various different colours, you can get these from anywhere, I'll put the links underneath it. If you have a slightly bigger budget, you can get them one of these. So this is, you might not be able to get this exact one, this is actually my music bag and I have had this for donkey years. So I've had this for a very long time, this is a pure leather music bag, it's got suede inside. I have no idea how much these are but I want to say probably something like £50 maybe 70 80 dollars something like that but they're very good quality and trust me i mean i've crammed everything apart from the kitchen sink into this bag and not a single stitch has come undone so 
These are perfect if you've got a slightly higher budget, because it's great for you know carrying your music about with you, especially if you're going to lessons or whatever it, wherever it is that you're going. Or you've got your slightly cheaper option. These are just as fine. They just don't go as thick, so you can't cram as many music books in. But they're they're fine if you've got a few. Two more accessories that you can get are some really nice rosin for the violin. So the violins should come with rosin already in the case. Um, but the rosin is generally not very good quality at all. Rosin is very cheap. This is I recommend normally spending about. I don't know, eight, nine, ten pounds or ten, eleven, twelve kind of dollars. That sounds like a lot of money for rosin, but trust me, one rosin will do you for the rest of your life. I doubt you will ever get through a rosin in your lifetime. So getting some good quality rosin to put on the strings is perfect because it's cheap. The cheaper the rosin, the more scratch you're going to get on the strings. And as a beginner, you don't want any scratch at all. So you can get a nice rosin. The links to these will be all underneath as well. You can also get them a practice mute. I've done several videos on these as well. Hopefully you can see what that's like. That basically just goes all the way over the bridge on the violin and it cuts down the sound tremendously. So it's great if you want to be practicing. So um, I suppose you've got to hope that your loved one doesn't take this offensively if they're telling them that you're buying a mute so that they can be a lot quieter when they're playing, but it's just more for the neighbors and everything. But in all seriousness, these mutes are brilliant. Go and have a look at my other my other channels for where I've done the ultra practice mute, which is what this is. Links to this will be underneath. If I remember, I'll put a link to the video of this as well and you can hear it. And you can have a look at the comments as well because people are saying some great things about this. They can practice at night and not, not wake the kids up upstairs or the next door neighbors or maybe they're just embarrassed that anybody else is hearing them so the ultra practice meet is great too and I'd probably say the final thing that you can get them if they haven't already of course is a couple of books so this is called fiddle time joggers uh, book one I'll put the links to this underneath as well this is a great beginner book I use this I'm sorry it's a bit dogged this is my copy uh, that I use for students when they don't bring their books or new students and things this I use this to teach with so this takes you from um, absolute beginner to probably about uh, enough to be or enough to move on to grade one or exams kind of stuff so I think this would probably work for self-teaching as well um, or along with my 10 lessons violin 10 lessons that I've done so this is a really good book also and I could not do this video without mentioning my own book that I've written uh, with Simon so this is called the great violin book one this is eight pounds or around about twelve dollars it's a book of 11 melodies or 11 violin melodies written by me with 68 piano backing tracks all recorded by Simon it's a great little book this is selling really really well it's a hundred percent downloadable so I've just printed this out myself and just bound it all up and everything but you can you can print out separate pages or the whole thing whatever you want to do so that's just how I've done this this is available worldwide and a hundred percent downloadable so this is a great little book as well so yeah had to mention it anyway. Okay, that's it for the violin stuff. Moving on to piano, again in no particular order. I think for the pianist, it is absolutely essential that you have a metronome. So this is one of those little ticky metronomes that you wind up, no batteries, anything like that. And the little kind of pendulum, it's a, it's, it's all pendulum and whatnot inside. This is quite cool, it's quite funky because it's all, it's clear and everything. I'm not sure how much you can see that on camera. Links to this will be underneath as well. I really like these and I would prefer these because they actually tick left and right and I can physically, I can hear them a lot better. I think there's a little bell in there as well that tings on every first beat or whatever it is. Um, and you can physically see the pendulum or the little ticker kind of going left and right. So you've got something visual as well. This is probably a little bit more expensive. This is about 20 odd pounds in the UK. So 30 odd or something dollars um, in America. The cheap alternative to this is one of these little kind of uh, digitally type metronomes here. Um, you can get these from eBay. Word of warning though, I probably would, would spend around the 10 pound and upwards mark if you want to get a digital batteryized, uh, I know that's not a word, but metronome. This is a Korg one, links to this are gonna be, gonna, be, gonna be underneath as well. The cheaper you go with these, the less likely you'll be able to hear them. There won't be so many functions on them and they'll be quite confusing. So you wanna be sort of spending around 10 pounds. Anything cheaper will just be sort of buying rubbish. So this one is your slightly more expensive one. Um, personally, I've got one of those and I prefer these and this is your slightly cheaper version. So the next 
next thing I would probably say would be a music bag. Now I mentioned these in the violin part, so I'm not gonna go into them. This is your cheaper version. Um, it's great, but you can't fit as much in it. And this is your more expensive one. This is your pure leather one. So this is my personal bag, but I will put links to this underneath. So yeah, music bags as well. Okay, um, if the pianist that you want to buy for has a digital piano, then I think getting them some headphones, if they haven't already got them, some digital pianos come with headphones, some don't but a really nice, good set of headphones is very worthwhile for a digital uh, piano player, um, obviously because it allows you to have the silent option, but you can't really use those kind of in-ear ones that you use for um, you know, your iPod and stuff like that. So what you're looking for is a nice pair of enclosed kind of headphones. So these are sort of a cheaper option. I can't actually remember how much these were, but I wanna say they're about less than 20 pounds. So, I mean, nice headphones anyway aren't gonna be that cheap but they I think they were less than 20 pounds so they were less than I want to say probably like less than 25 dollars or something which is quite cheap for a nice pair of headphones that you would be using with a piano the alternative or the more expensive alternative to that would be links will be underneath these are Sennheiser ones so um, again I can't remember how much these were but these had to have been something like 40 50 pounds so these look like these. So you're paying for the quality of, of the electronics inside the headphone um, and also the how, how the sound is going to be sounding in, in the headphone. You don't want kind of a weak, weedy little kind of digital piano sound when you're practicing because it's not going to be representative of what you're doing. Um, and plus they're nice and enclosed so you're not getting a lot of bleeding. They're not, everybody else isn't hearing you kind of thump away at the piano and they can hear little tinkly little bits of what you're playing outside the headphone headphones so these are your slightly more expensive option these are your Sennheisers links underneath um, these are just kind of generic kind of cheaper ones so the more you can spend on anything like this guys the better it is it's you know buy cheap buy twice kind of thing so I hopefully I've catered for everybody's budget here okay we're nearly there so um, another thing that I think is really really important for the pianist is a sustain pedal there are various different types of sustain pedals you can get I absolutely love these ones this is a Yamaha FC4 anything Yamaha you can't go wrong with you can get Casio versions of these I haven't tried them I wouldn't be convinced on them these are quite heavy so when you put them on the floor and you start using your foot you haven't you don't put them under the piano and then they're gonna slowly end up kind of you know out the back and, and in, in the other room and everything so these are quite good in in terms of that so you can't go wrong with the Yamaha one links underneath you can get the cheaper sort of square versions as well I don't have a sample of one of those to show you unfortunately but they're probably the size of you know like the actual palm of your hand without the fingers if that kind of makes sense so they're not they're not very I'm just trying to think probably the size of um, this is my coffee coaster so probably the size of something like that um, but again they're not very heavy and you have to put some you have to put some double-sided duct tape um, underneath it so when you get the duct tape and you fold it make to make it double-sided to kind of put that on the floor so that when you're using it, it stops your foot from shooting out into the next room um, but again, if you can get one of these, these are a little bit more expensive, 20 odd pounds, 30 odd dollars. These I think you can pick up for these. I don't know why I'm picking up a coaster, um, but the sustain pedal equivalent of a coffee coaster, um, the size wise anyway, um, yeah, you can probably get them for about 10 quid or 15 dollars, something like that. And last but not least, music books. Again, if your pianist hasn't already got them, but this is the uh, the complete piano player book one. These are this is the book, the series of, or this is the book that I actually use in my ten pianos course lessons. So this will go very handy. Well, this will go hand in hand with those videos as well. If you can get these links underneath, this is about seven or eight pounds. So what, eleven, twelve dollars, something like that. Um, Yep, so this is good for that and it teaches you everything from sort of beginner to being able to kind of play. And of course, the Great Piano Book one. So this video would not be complete unless I plugged my own book, which is the Great Piano Book one, which I wrote with Simon. Similar to the um, Great Violin Book one. Uh, this is available in, in a variety of formats. Do have a look at the link underneath of how to buy it. It's completely safe. Um, you can buy this in a downloadable version where you print out, you can buy the downloadable version on its own, you can buy the down downloadable version which is in PDF um, with the MP3s which are the performance 
pieces of this. There's 22 original pieces there, half written by me, half written by Simon. Um, and we've also got the physical book as well, which is here, which is available. And we will post this out to anywhere in the world, no matter where you live. So it's all international um, postage for this as well. The physical book is really nice. Um, if you can see what's going on in there, I'm flicking the pages, but we're really, really pleased with it. Um, yeah, it's just really nice to have something physical because I know a lot of musicians, including me, we like to have physical books rather than having uh, printed paper all over the show and everything that just gets everywhere. Then you've got to bind them all together and, and whatnot anyway. So this is our physical book that we've got, um, details underneath, um, yeah, so there you go. So Merry Christmas everybody, I hope that this helps you to find the right gift for your musician, loved one or whoever it is that you want to buy for. Um, I've tried to make this as quick and concise as I can, but there's nothing that's rubbish there. Everything that is down here I have personally in my own, literally in my own personal collection, probably apart from the music bag of which the leather one is mine, um, but other than that, um, I literally have everything and I use it all the time and I would not be without it. So thanks very much for watching and I shall see you on the next video.